good morning people so uh, last class we looked at this light and dark photosynthetic reaction i will revise this in the later time point uh, where i have few slides uh, related to it uh, like these ones yeah so that's where uh, it will be more simplified version so you don't have to break your head like i did but this is much simpler version of what we did uh, but then that was still required for you people to know Uh, all of this uh, individual so uh, like i will skip that whole of the large uh, uh, dark and light photosynthetic reaction what we had done earlier i'll just start with the uh, or maybe i'll quickly revise the light one so that it is in sync with what we are doing that small part of dark photosynthetic reaction was remained so again when the sunlight will fall on to the chloroplast it will be taken up by the chlorophyll pigments those chlorophyll pigments they will cause release of electrons and these electrons they will be used for the uh, generation of energy molecules that is atp and nadph so that was the first part of the reaction called light photosynthetic reaction which is very simple and obviously this goes via photosystem 1 and photosystem 2 uh, but that we will skip for so then the next type of reaction is actually a carbon fixing reaction carbon fixing because it is taking the sorry carbon dioxide and then it is fixing it into a glucose molecule which is utilized by the plant as a energy source so that is why it is called as carbon fixing reaction which is dark reaction now in this sugar molecules they are formed and the water and carbon dioxide uh, along with the uh, uh, sorry from the water and carbon dioxide molecule so that is the whole photosynthesis reaction that we know co2 plus h2o it will form c6h12o6 that is glucose and plus oxygen that's a normal unbalanced uh, i would say photosynthetic reaction but the molecules they are same so the dark reaction occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast again uh, the light reaction was happening in the thylakoid membrane because that's where the chlorophyll was that's where the light was falling on to and then after these electrons are uh, released they have it, this reaction happens in the stroma of the chloroplast structure that is outside that granum stack of thylakoids that is stroma where they will utilize nadph and atp uh, products of the light reaction so they will utilize the atp and uh, nadph which were released or which were synthesized in the first half of the reaction that is light reaction so plants will capture the carbon dioxide again this mechanism we know how they capture through the stomata and they will proceed to the kelvin photosynthesis cycle or you can simply call it a kelvin cycle now in kelvin cycle the uh, like during this light reaction whatever uh, this it will convert the six molecules of carbon dioxide into sugar and glucose and the chemical reaction that you see is written here three molecules of carbon dioxide atp and nadph these are generated in the earlier light reaction along with the water molecule the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is synthesized g3p it is short formed as it is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and hydrogen uh, atoms uh, or hydrogen ions nadp plus adp plus and eight phosphate molecule because the phosphate will be removed uh, from these molecules and it will be released here nadph uh, will release this hydrogen again that's a bond breaking energy so that energy is utilized in the formation of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate this is one of the precursor molecule uh, for the synthesis of glucose so that is what is the part of the dark photosynthetic reaction and then of course up, uh, after this is formed it will enter into this this kelvin cycle where is it i have shown it somewhere yeah so uh, where is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate yeah once this is synthesized from phosphoglyceride which was already present from the cyclic reaction process it will enter into this cycle it will form glucose after several reaction because this is a three membered uh, carbon it will uh, like 
kind of add one more molecule of glyceraldehyde three phosphate and it will cause glucose formation so that's like a simple uh, reaction uh, of this g3p or glyceraldehyde three phosphate that happens in the dark photosynthetic reaction uh, okay not okay okay <laughs> Okay, so then let me skip that part without uh, revising it. But yeah, if you people have any question, please do ask. So in general, if I have to differentiate between light and dark, it takes place in the presence of light. This place, uh, takes place in the absence of light. That is very obvious. This is a photochemical reaction. Photochemical, why? Because it involves the light energy, right? That is light reaction. That is first half of the reaction. Second one is biochemical reaction. Why biochemical? Because it utilizes the energy which is generated from biomolecules like ATP and NADPH. So that way, this is a biochemical reaction or it is also called as biosynthetic phase and photosynthetic phase. So that way, uh, using light energy or photon energy and dark reaction occurs using a chemical energy. Light reaction takes place in the grana or thylakoid structures of the chloroplast and this dark reaction takes place in the stroma of the chloroplast. I hope you again remember the structure of the chloroplast. So let me show you that part as well. So you remember these stacks of thylakoid, they are called as grana which is shown here in a kind of light green shade. Within this light reaction oil occur. Again, the reason we the chlorophyll pigments are present within the thylakoid membranes. And this outer space outside to this disc-like structure within the inner membrane, we are within the chloroplast, that is stroma. And that's where the dark reaction happens uh, in the plant. NADPH utilizes H plus ion to form NADPH. And in this case, the hydrogen of the NADPH will combine with HCO2 and it will form the G3P, not just with a CO2, but obviously the water will also be there. But the reaction in context to NADPH, here NADPH is getting synthesized, here it is getting broken down. End products are ATP and NADPH. Here the end products are uh, glucose uh, molecule. Uh, the water molecule gets split into two half, that is hydrogen and oxygen. Right, uh, and that is when that energy is utilized. Uh, the H plus will go with NADPH. So whatever is generated here as NADP, that will go back to the light reaction for next cycle. That NADP will add hydrogen, becomes NADPH again. Energy synthesis. So this is like a cyclic process. Uh, so water is split into hydrogen and oxygen. Here, glucose is produced and carbon dioxide is utilized in the dark reaction. Photolysis occurs in photosystem 2, uh, like photosystem 2, again, that complex of proteins. And here, photolysis does not occur. Photolysis is referred to as the process of breakdown of water using the light energy. That is what is photolysis. Lysis means breakdown, and photolysis is the process of breakdown of uh, water in the presence of light energy. So that is photolysis. And this is the difference between light and dark reaction. Now, so uh, I will skip this for a moment. We'll come back to this. Uh, this will revise whole of this uh, processes. Again, basics, you know it very well. Reaction of photosynthesis, you know it very well. Importance, you know. Uh, I, again, I'm assuming you know. Uh, if you don't, you tell me, I will explain it. But I, these are very basic things. Plants, they can be autotrophs uh, and animals, they can be heterotrophs. That is like just a different categories. And then there are photoautotrophs and chemoautotrophs based on whether they use light energy for uh, doing photosynthesis or whether they use chemical energy uh, for uh, the uh, energy generation process. So that way they are different. Raw materials we had already seen for the photosynthesis reaction. So in this photosynthesis, it is mainly divided into these two types like we saw. Light reaction, which is also called as photochemical reaction. 
or hill reaction again this was discovered by the hill uh, guy that's why this name but you can again forget it you need to remember this photochemical for sure uh, dark reaction is also called as kelvin cycle or biosynthetic reaction this is light dependent this is light independent reaction so basic difference has to be clear in your head now what happens in general is the these are the simplified steps for you people absorption of the light energy by the chlorophyll so chlorophyll will absorb light upon obviously the, after sunlight uh, being uh, entrapped into this chlorophyll molecule they will get activated and they will release electrons chlorophyll will release electrons those electrons that is ultimately because of the light energy they will be used in the photolysis of water that is the breakdown of water into uh, hydrogen and oxygen so what you get is the energy from four photons which is ultimately of the light energy which has already generated enough electrons along with the energy and they will break down this molecule of water into these components so reduction of nadph that is when the energy formation happens so in this the uh, nadp will get converted into nadph that is one reaction that is a reduction reaction because it is gaining electrons four electrons they are gained by this nadp molecule so it is a reduction reaction and then photophosphorylation photo means again light energy phosphorylation means addition of phosphate so using this light energy which was uh, again from uh, this uh, sunlight uh, or sun rays this adp and phosphate will combine to form adenosine triphosphate so from diphosphate it becomes triphosphate and that is again a bond formation energy gained with the light reaction and again the same sequence of uh, events will repeat at every light reaction cycle so light reaction will happen then dark reaction will happen again light reaction and so on so that way this cycles will keep happening this is also briefed a uh, kind of here light energy will fall on to chlorophyll it will generate atp using the electrons which are released that photolysis will also occur due to the electrons uh, like release the electrons it will break it down into hydrogen and oxygen oxygen will be released outside through stomata and hydrogen will be utilized by the nadph molecule so that is the general uh, process of the photosynthesis reaction now any question here simpler hopefully okay uh, then uh, this part is not within your syllabus so i am going to skip it but that i just wanted to tell you here what happens to that glucose molecule uh, after its generation or uh, within photosynthesis that it is generated what happens so it is again uh, added with oxygen and then it releases these two molecules that is what uh, is going out and more 38 molecules of atp they are generated which is a kind of glycolysis process uh, again uh, this we need not know much but we need to know that one glucose molecule can generate up to 36 to 38 molecules of atp yes akshay sir during the formation of atp from adp and the single phosphate ion <clears throat> will won't there be energy again released because that's again another chemical bond right it's formed no but yes sir. bond is formed so it will gain energy take energy not release energy Sir, but during the formation of a bond, energy is released, right? No, it's always uh, consumed. Most of the cases, it is consumed. I must say, until and unless they have additional electrons, which are being released in that bond formation, then you can say that that the energy is released. But in the uh, most of the bond formation, it's like 
uh, ultimately it's the uh, electrons they have to align themselves in a certain configuration what we call as electron orientation or electron conformation right so there is a spin you know their electrons they are always up in opposite spin to each other and that's when they form a bond so to be into that opposite spin they will need a certain energy and that is usually uh, uh, like gained by uh, certain uh, molecules or certain energy sources so that is the main reason no why we need a catalyst at times you i'm sure you must have studied in the chemistry part that there are catalyst molecule what they do is they uh, like a simple reaction of uh, let's say uh, copper with sulfuric acid it forms copper sulfate right so in that that copper molecule has to accept the sulfate molecule to form the copper sulfate so that is like you are taking first you need energy to break down h2so4 molecule which is much easier rather because it's very strong acid so in that case the energy is already released in bond breaking of one molecule same energy is utilized in the bond formation of the other molecule so that's in general how it happens yes sir okay then finally okay uh okay so uh, the now there are several adaptations of the leaf for the photosynthesis process uh, like photosynthesis came into this eukaryotic plant structures from certain uh, what we can say uh, pr uh, prokaryotic chlorophyll containing or photosynthetic pigment containing Uh, bacteria and so on right that was the process of evolution so and over the time leaf or leaves they have adapted themselves to have more and more photosynthesis so what are those factors first one is the leaf surface area obviously more surface area more light will be harvested and more sunlight will be gathered by this chloroplast so ultimately more electron generation more atp generation more glucose generation it's a simple flow of information so that's why large surface area of the leaf helps in increasing photosynthesis reaction leaf arrangement now leaf arrangement is again uh, there to increase a maximum sunlight or to uh, absorb maximum sunlight uh, what does this mean is uh you do not see usually leaves arranged one below other they are usually in at different axis on a particular uh, stem so that 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 way the leaf arrangement is done in such a way by the plant itself that it should absorb maximum amount of sunlight then the presence of cuticle or upper epidermis uh, we have seen this in the part of transpiration the presence of cuticle will prevent the loss of water that's what was the waxy layer present on the leaf and it will prevent loss of water so that the more water is retained within the plant which can be utilized for the photosynthesis upper epidermis does not possess chloroplast so that the light passes through them so easily if the upper epidermis uh, or upper epidermal cell would have possessed Uh, light or oh, sorry uh, would have possess the chloroplast structure all the light will be entrapped in those uh, cells itself and then it will not be able to go deep down deep down in the sense across the leaf cells there are different cells again like upper epidermis palisade mesophyll spongy mesophyll and lower epidermis general layers so if it is upper epidermis will have chloroplast most of the sunlight will be absorbed by the upper epidermis itself and it will not be able to uh, penetrate to the other layers so that's what is the function of cuticle and epidermis so they are designed in such a way that maximum uh, sunlight absorption happens and light can pass through them easily numerous stomata uh, again numerous stomata they help in more and more carbon dioxide to diffuse uh, inside the leaf so that the photosynthesis can happen Uh, to a greater extent and uh, on the other hand it also 
prevent the excess of transpiration process so that water is also retained the thinness of the leaves it allows the gases to reach easily uh, through different layers and it will ensure the light passes or penetrates into the middle portion of the leaf that's where maximum of the chloroplast is present so that's when the leaves are thinner very few leaves that you will see they are thicker especially the succulent type of plants they have very thick leaves uh, and the reason is very obvious there as well because they need to retain more and more water uh, for their uh, metabolic processes they don't need water at such in general in large amount but whatever they need it is always being stored uh, with them so that way this uh, thickness or thinness of the leaves is very very important for the photosynthesis reaction so that the gases can easily reach to the different layers within the uh, leaf chloroplast is again another uh, adaptation uh, which was uh, done over the time for the photosynthetic reactions so these mesophils uh, mesophil cells or guard cells they contain large amount of chlorophyll uh, so like again you know this structures what is the function of chloroplast so we need not talk about it but surely that is one of the leaf adaptation so the extensive vein system present in the uh, uh, leaf structure right uh, now what does it refer to so we know uh, veins these are the conducting system of the uh, plant uh, and they contain xylem for transportation of water as well as minerals towards the leaves from the root system and of course the phloem for the transport of food or sugar molecule from leaves to uh, out uh, of the leaves that is through stem or roots and so on so many different cells and it that is the way it helps in transportation of to and from the chloro sorry mesophyll cells of the leaf so that is the function of the vein system uh, within the leaf so uh, there are uh, again uh, this xylem and phloem tissue they help in conduction of water along with the mineral and if it is phloem uh, the water along with the food molecule or the glucose molecule they are being transported across the uh, plant so if that would not have been present if the veins were not uh, present in the leaf structure then the food would have accumulated there and that food will not be transported to the other part so that's when this transport system in the leaf through xylem and phloem tissue is very very important process thin cuticle made of wax again uh, this is to protect uh, the leaf from any infection and prevent the loss without blocking out the sunlight so otherwise if the cuticle would have been optically non transparent so that means it would have absorbed all the light and it will not reach to the mesophyll re region so that's when the cuticle is mostly thin or even if it is thicker it is not so thick uh, and of course it is optically transparent that means the light can pass through it so easily so that is the thin cuticle made of wax palisade layer which is present at the uh, top of the leaf the function is to absorb more and more light and that way they increase the a uh, photosynthesis like i said palisad mesophyll those these are those columnar uh, cells just below the upper epidermis they absorb more and more light and then they uh, help in uh, like performing more photosynthesis reaction spongy mesophyll the air spaces in that spongy mesophyll allows the gases to diffuse through the leaf so that way they help and that is one type of adaptation plant has been uh, like plant has received over the time of evolution and palisade cells also contain many chloroplast and that is when they absorb uh, uh, all the light that is falling onto them so these are various different leaf adaptations present in the uh, leaf structure of a plant uh, i assume uh, this part is relatively simpler uh, but if you have any question please do ask
okay so uh, in that case uh, i would prefer to stop here uh, there is hardly a small part left uh, with respect to the experiment uh, for today